There are three possible methods by which the communists might take us over. One would be by a peaceful coup d'etat, as in Czechoslovakia in 1948. The second method would be by fomenting civil war in this country and aiding the communist side with military might. But there is a third method, which they are clearly relying on most heavily. And this is taking us over by a process so gradual and insidious that communist rule is slipped over so far on the American people before they ever realize it is happening. The process in that direction is going on right now, gradually, but surely, and with ever-increasing spread and speed. A part of that plan, of course, is to induce the gradual surrender of American sovereignty, piece by piece and step by step, to various international organizations, of which the United Nations is the outstanding, but far from the only example. But another part, is the conversion of the United States into a socialist nation, quite similar to Russia itself in its economy and political outlook, before police state enforcement is ever introduced. The best way to explain the aim here is simply to quote the directive under which some of the very largest American foundations have been secretly but visibly working for years. This directive is so to change the economic and political structure of the United States that it can be comfortably merged with Soviet Russia. Now, here are the communist aims for the United States. One, greatly expanded government spending for every conceivable means of getting rid of ever larger sums of American money as wastefully as possible. Two, higher and then much higher taxes. Three, an increasingly unbalanced budget, despite the higher taxes. Four, wild inflation of our currency. Five, government controls of prices, wages, and materials supposedly to combat inflation. Six, greatly increased socialistic controls over every operation of our economy and every activity of our daily lives. This is to be accompanied naturally and automatically by a correspondingly huge increase in the size of our bureaucracy and in both the cost and reach of our domestic government. Seven, far more centralization of power in Washington and the practical elimination of our state lines. There is a many-faceted drive at work to have our state lines eventually mean no more within the nation than our county lines do now within the states. Eight, the steady advance of federal aid to and control over our educational system, leading to complete federalization of our public education. Nine, a constant hammering into the American consciousness of the horror of modern warfare the beauties and the absolute necessity of peace. Peace always on communist terms, of course. And 10, the consequent willingness of the American people to allow the steps of appeasement by our government, which amount to a piecemeal surrender of the rest of the free world and of the United States itself. In summary, gentlemen, we are losing, rapidly losing, a Cold War in which our freedom, our country, and our very existence are at stake. And while we don't seem to know we are losing this war, you can be sure the communists do. There is just one thing, only one thing in the whole world which the communists fear today. It is that despite their tremendous influence in our government and over all of our means of mass communication, the American people will wake up too soon to what has really been happening and what is now happening right under their very noses. The only thing which can possibly stop the communists is for the American people to learn the truth in time. 